it's a short program and of course mm -hmm. it's still in the longer program. Okay, so let me introduce David here, uh, David Rodriguez of uh, Transpersonal Hypnotherapy. Transpersonal means the crossing of body, mind, and spirit. It assumes that humans operate on all three levels or that the mind, body, and spirit of an individual affect each other. And uh, Dr. Rodriguez is a PhD. He's a certified transpersonal master hypnotherapist and a published author who is going to donate a signed copy to the <laughs> <laughs> ASPH library. Now. David, won't you please come up? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, transpersonal hypnotherapy, its transpersonal approach emphasizes, implies that mind, body, and spirit affect each other, in which hypnosis is the catalyst, or through hypnosis is the vehicle to alleviate and reach an answer as to that emotional psychosomatic Ill illness issue. So rather than go on into giving you further definitions of transpersonal hypnotherapy, I'd like to bring it into present, into live cases, and how we, I have gone forward with the client in working the issue he or she had when it came to me, and I address it through hypno transpersonal hypnotherapy. For instance, I get a call, the lady calls and says, can you help me with stress? I'm, I have a very stressful life. Obviously, I said yes. Over the phone, I went forward and I did the clinical intake. I took all the information that I, I felt it was necessary. We set up an appointment. When she came in, we went and did the typical induction and so forth and so on. And once I had her at the level that I could begin working, establish one of the things in transpersonal hypnotherapy is read the person's energy fields, which is also known as the chakra fields. In doing so, the hypnotherapist, the transpersonal hypnotherapist, should be able to pick up any part of the body that has either illness or disease. Well, I pick up the liver. The liver is a recipient of anger. So I ask the client, are you an angry person? And she said, yes. And then when she went on to tell me all the issues in her life at work, where coworkers, where her friends and family. So what do you do then? You don't do a, a guided meditation, a, trans, uh, a script and saying you become a happier, freer person. You got to get to the root of the issue. And that is done through that modality of transpersonal hypnotherapy. So you take her to the source of it. What happened? We needed to go to a past life, a previous past life, where she died at a very young age of an accident. And her dying moments, she was very angry. Why do I have to die so young? She was very angry and she took that energy with her when she died. One of the things that we learn in transpersonal hypnotherapy is that when I die, whatever is in my mind, whatever energy, emotions I have at that moment or during those final moments is what I'm going to take with me as a residue. And that's what she did. She had that residue that created all that anger part of it. Because also, complementing that, there were the anger of childhood, of a parent that was very physical, abusive, we heard. So in, in doing the transformation, the healing through transpersonal hypnotherapy with the client, the anger was dissipated. We clear the residue, we bring, that creates a void. That void is filled with love, <coughs> and anything else, I ask the client, what would you like to bring in into your heart? And whatever he, she tells me is what I bring into that person's heart. 
to fill the void that now we took out that negativity from that anger. Now we'll fill it with love, <coughs> joy, and whatever else the client wants. Another, another uh, client calls and says, tells me, all my life I have been very dysfunctional. Can you help? Obviously, yes. Go into, again, the, the typical process, have her read the scan, her energy fields, her chakra. Well, it turns out that there's an attachment, also known as, um, what is it they call in the Christian world? An entity you're talking an, about? An, an entity, an attachment, a possession. Mm -hmm. Well, that attachment has been with her all her life, since she came to this prison life. Well, how'd that happen? And going back into when that energy first came into her being, you have to go back 900 years. It had happened at a time when she was being burned alive. And through her raw emotions, she opened up. And this entity that was earthbound joined her. And now in this lifetime, it manifested uh, a lot of things that we don't know why it happens, how it happens. I'm taking an educated guess that it is the time for her to release, that she will herself to release and let go. So in transpersonal hypnotherapy, we work with the high self, her high self, one of the things that I establish is if a person has any kind of faith, belief, religious belief. In this case, she did. So I work with a belief system and bringing in, in addition to the heart self, angels, archangels. And we do the, it took me two sections to get rid of that entity. Very aggressive. Usually one section. This one, it took me two sections. Well, once she was, once the entity was released and let go, send it to the light, then again, we bring energy that is of love and whatever else the client feels that he or she wants. And all this is done through transpersonal hypnotherapy. This, when, when this person came in being very dysfunctional all her life, what kind of script would I give her or give him? Just visualize being happy, being very functional. Regression. Okay, so this is what we do in transpersonal hypnotherapy. We go to the source, transform that energy, and renew and empower the soul and the mind of the person. This young man calls. Uh, I have a question yes, sir. for you. Uh, I become more perceptive when reading people, and I won't necessarily try and describe how I do it. Um, but sometimes information will come about a person. You mentioned in your two cases. The first one, uh, you somehow were able to perceive with the chakras or the liver being dysfunctional. The second one, you were able to perceive a, an entity attachment of some sort. How are you getting that? Is that just something that's coming to you? How, how are you picking that up? Um, part of, like, it's a gift that we all have. We just have to um, expand, and that is our intuition. So part of what I do intuitively is work with my intuition. So when you feel something <laughs> there, you address it, you just go with it? I, I do both. Okay. Um, in this case, I felt, in a sense, something that didn't, didn't belong, an energy. Okay. It just didn't just felt, it. felt it. Okay. So the next thing I, I did, I asked, tell me what color is your aura? And how, how your aura's colors are? And then I expanded to double check, tell me what's in your heart chakra? and your mind chakra, and what color do you have? 
if any time is dark or black, that's a conf confirmation of what, what I felt, what I sensed. Okay. Then what I, what I did, now that I'm going to expand here, I addressed the entity. Okay. I asked the entity, you may speak through the client, let's say David. You speak through David, and then I ask the question, who are you? Well, you already have him in the trance at that Yes, oh yeah, oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah, it has to be. Okay. Yeah. Then I ask, who are you? How long have you been? <coughs> That's how established that it was back in the 12th, 12th <coughs> century. I see. And ask all the questions. Sometimes you will not get a response. Right. Um, for instance, there's a case, this lady, that she, she wanted, if I could help her with her uh, relationships. She had, she's a young lady, she had had two relationships that were very hard, but she felt that part of her problem was she was very uh, insecure. Um, again, she's already well under, and I asked, I felt, I felt uh, there's something here. Well, long story short, I established, again, there's an entity, an attachment. Uh, this is an attachment that joined her when she was 16. This young lady was playing with the Ouija board. And that entity had died here in Phoenix from an auto accident. It was a young soul. And when, when this entity joined her, it interfered with her two relationships. Often the entities will interfere with the client's life as it was on this, on the formal sample and on, the, and on this one. Um, but it only took one section to send this entity to the light. Subs subsequently, uh, session, we brought in this, the entity now from, from the light because she wanted to ask questions, who the entity was. We couldn't get that answer during that initial section where we send it to the light. Will not tell us who it was. We got the answers once it came back from being in the light on the other side. And that's when we discovered that it was an entity that died in an auto accident, it was married, left a couple of children behind, and so forth and so on. Um, what happens, what happens when, when we do that? The person now, this lady, when she came back, and I asked, how you been doing? Oh, she says, you know, I've been kind of down. I've been kind of depressed. Well, that was as a result of not having that entity. It missed that energy. I, I would expect that not be the case, and it surprised me. Anyways, yes, sir. You, you said the entity came back from the light? <coughs> we call in the subsequent oh. section. That's, I, and I mention this because one of the things we do in transpersonal hypnosis and hypnotherapy is be able to go to the other side. And, and one of the things, how I even relate this to um, the, who's the gentleman that belonged to the association that is ill? That you Dan, Rice. Dan, Rice. Dan Rice. One of the things we can do on his behalf. Uh, on a one-to-one -one section, or as a group section, is go into um, uh, transpersonal mode and bring the angels, archangels, for those of you that relate to, or whatever entities, or whatever you believe, for those of you that have a belief system, and work with that energy and bring in healing. So will you do the guided meditation after you finish your No, this will take time. This will take time, so um, no, uh, I will do it, but we don't have time. That's a good try. I hate life Yes. Question, is an entity always a negative? No. Not necessarily, right. An entity is a lost soul, like this, on this young lady, a mm -hmm. uh, young soul that didn't know what to do, which we know that often what happens when we have tragic deaths, such as accidents, the souls remain earthbound, and that's what happened, but no, not necessarily, no. I have a question. Um, I've done uh, Light Between Life sessions, and so often, you know, we've designed our life so we can you know, 
know, set ourselves up to learn certain lessons. Could that be, you know, letting an entity attach? Could that be part of a life lesson for both? Or is that, I mean, have you ever encountered where that... Um, What's an agreement? Right. A pre-agreement? I'm not aware. Okay. I'm not aware. Might be something to investigate, because you're bringing something up that I was thinking of, because I do LDL work. Too. Um, I will take an educated guess on that, because if it's interfering with my life, um, we come here to learn our own soul lessons, to pay and reclaim, pay and reclaim karma. Um, and if I have an entity that interferes with my decision making and my journey through this life, I don't know that, that there will be a prayer agreement on that. So um, I don't know. I don't think so. And so this is all part of what we can do in transpersonal hypnotherapy beyond a script, beyond telling the client, and you know, I am gonna tell you that you are gonna be happy and joyful and stress-free, because we are more than just a body. I think all of you, if not all of you, most of you agree that we are energy. We are, some people say, soul having a physical experience. So being that the Creator has given us free will and opportunities to grow and find more about what we are to heal. Because one of the things you do in transpersonal hypnotherapy <coughs> is able to help people heal from illness, diseases that, they, that they've been told they have for life. And I can go through the list. And it, I will challenge you, anyone here that has a psychosomatic illness, one that is non-organic, I guarantee you that if you wish, if you want to, you may heal. Any illness, which science will tell you 80% of human illness are psychosomatic. And by that we know that it's created by the mind. And as we create by the mind, we can heal it. But there's a tool where we don't have to go on for the rest of our life taking medication. We don't have to go to emergency clinics. We don't have to keep seeing doctors, psychiatrists, psychologists for, for years to come. We may heal. You don't have to see a transpersonal hypnotherapy. You can heal yourself. <coughs> yes. Would you mind just being elaborating a little bit more about the chakra reading and how you do it? Okay. So once the person, obviously, it's always once the person is in the level of relaxation that it needs to be. I will, I, will, I will have the person, one way or several ways, is to tell me to scan the body from top to bottom, from bottom to top, to top. And as that is done, this I... This is with the higher self? Yes. Okay. As, as, as long the person is of a belief of <coughs> higher self, because if I have a person which I have had a handful that are known agnostic perhaps. So all I <coughs> ask them then is to tell me what colors you see and then I tell them where to look. Based on that, and again I'm working with my intuition, I, I go by what they tell me. Anything that's dark, anything that's black, is illness, is disease, or is an attachment. <coughs> as simple as that, there's no magic to it. There's nothing to it. So having said that, what I'm telling you, what I do, is anything that you can do in your practice as well. Of course, it always comes down, remember, all of us are, can be a conduit 
for healing. All it takes is your will and the client's will to be well. That's all. It's our inherent right to heal ourselves. But what happens? The mind gets on the way. Our emotion gets on the way. So that's where a transpersonal hypnotherapist comes in the picture. Would you like to add something, Louis? Well, um, let me give you a little case just to get feedback. It's, uh, I have a gal who was uh, 17 years old, um, sexual preference, a sexual preference issue case. Um, believing she's lesbian, um, feeling, and she may have been hurt from some younger relationships with guys, but she's trying to maintain an open mind, to not be prejudiced by that, and trying to feel what's the right pathway for her sexuality. So, um, I'll get to the point. So I did a past life regression on Saturday. I've worked with her for a while and other stuff. Past life regression, uh, it's kind of interesting. The first thing she went to was probably a futuristic life. Mm. Um, she wasn't aware of that, but as she was describing it, that's what it sounded like. And she was 18, she jumped off a balcony killing herself because she couldn't resolve the sexuality <coughs> issue uh, that was haunting her. Uh, then I got her to go to some past lives. When she was a man, she, he got married, had a family, but it wasn't really what he wanted. He wanted to have a, a relationship with, a, with another man, but he, he did his obligations, but then committed suicide driving uh, his car. And then there was another past life where she was a woman, again, not being fulfilled as a woman in that relationship, and again, committing suicide. So there's a, there's a theme in this. <laughs> so, <laughs> and as I'm doing each past life, I'm go I always do the process, what lessons are you getting, what lessons are you learning? And at the end, I say, well, that future life hasn't, doesn't have to occur. I explain more to it. It doesn't have to occur that way but you need to have that realization of where you need to go with your heart and your experiences in this lifetime to, to, to take that on. So, I, I don't know if you want to comment on that. It was just, I found that interesting, uh, that situation. Because some people, now, if you come to, if, I'll throw this out there. You can take it for what it means. About 15, 16, 17 years ago, I did some advanced hypnosis training with Scott McFall. Some of you may or may not know who Scott McFall is. He's a very, very well-known hypnotist. Very, very competent. And I had a similar case. I had a transgender person coming to me at the time, and Scott's reaction was, he's all screwed up, or she's all screwed up. I do a couple of sessions. I'll get them. If it's a woman, they should like a man. If it's a man, they should like a woman. That was his approach. Now, I don't know if he's changed over 15, 16, 17 years. I'm not sure I agree with that. But that was his. There's something that happened in this lifetime, at this time, that got screwed up and needs to be fixed. I'll just throw that on. I'll let you comment. Well, if anyone else wants to comment, please feel free. Okay, before I expand on that, yeah. let's see if anybody wants to comment on that. <coughs> All right, so here's a good simple why we should never judge anybody. Why is beyond our understanding that it's a mystical life, it's a mystical world, a mysterious world, a beautiful w planet, but we don't have the answers for most of what goes on. So I get a call. It's a man from Gilbert. He tells me he's, a, he's, he's afraid of being close but a near people. He, he wants to know if I can help him. I say, yes, come on. I do the clinical intake, and my gut feeling tells me he's gay. I don't ask no questions. As I do, get him under hypnosis, we have to go to the previous past life. He's a, he's a woman. He has two children. He's pregnant with the third one. He sees his husband and the two children drown. She sees that. I say he in present life, as, as he tells him what's going on. Anyway, to make a long story, in trying to find out why he has that phobia, is that he has to learn in this life why he's gay. That's 
to value himself for what he is. Mm -hmm. Because he needed to value life as well. And the fact that what made him uh, phobic around groups, it had to do also with something else in that past life that I, I can't remember all the details, so I'm just going to skip that. But here's the funny thing with this man. He's only in his early 30s. He is from the countryside. He's Hispanic. He came from another Latin country. And he also has another issue from that lifetime, from the last lifetime, and that is that he has um, an injury in his right foot that he cannot understand why when he goes into long drives, it hurts. Well, he was injured and we healed that. But the funny part of it is that as, I, as I, I'm working with him, he says, he keeps telling me, how could this be? How could this be? But yet he's open to the healing. Where he, he this is a few years ago, four years ago, from, from, from that time on, he keeps sending me clients. But yeah, he left when I shook his hand and he walked out of, was walking out of the office, he kept saying, how could this be? And how much time we no, have? No, I was, I was just going to add something about the trans person. Yes. Um, when I work with Life Between Life clients, um, a lot of the times they have spent lifetimes in one dominant sex, whether it's male or a female. And then as you need to balance, as you're evolving as a soul, you really need to take on both roles as a man, as a woman. And so they agree to this life, okay, I will take the role of being, say, a man, and then a lot, and again, not feeling comfortable in their own skin. So that's what I hear, you know, from a lot of my transgender clients. They just never felt comfortable in their own skin, in their own body. So there it goes. As to why we should never judge, and why why is a oneness out there that is to me as I try to think of a of a creator in a universe in our mind, I can't go there. It gets too big. But in transpersonal hypno hypnotherapy, we're able to get bits and pieces of that creator of the healing of the transformation, of the empowerment that we, that I, as a hypnotherapist or the client, receive. Because every time I work with somebody, it empowers me in so many different ways. Are there any other questions? Well, I have one that's bothered me because my still set wasn't there. Um, uh, he was, he knew my background was in education and I worked with a lot of kids and parents that were school stuff and fears and a lot of stuff. <coughs> so anyway, this is an adult who um, had, had been that, you know, labeled with a learning disability but also was dyslexic. And lots of issues that he came up. So when I put him under and he was really under, I, I usually um, recorded and I had one little light on in my, by my desk but mostly I have a real stat and all that. So this entity comes in, dark voice, all my electronics go off, mm -hmm. everything freezes, and I I don't know, Edith Fiore's book on, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yes. So yeah, I had read that, and it, that part didn't bother me, getting rid of him, however. Well, I didn't want to get around, you know, where, tell me about yourself. Why are you here? What are you getting out of this? Are you ready to go to the light? What do we need to do to help you do that? Wouldn't leave didn't want to leave, didn't want to go. In the meantime, this poor guy is starting to have react. So I brought him back up and we put it on the screen and had him relax while I figured out, well, maybe my electronics really didn't go out. Let me see what I could do. I come back in, bring him back down. He's still there. So I finally brought him back up and I couldn't get rid There's of him. There's three ways we get rid of Those entities that are ready, you, you send them to the light, they go. That I got. <laughs> They're the ones that you have to talk to them. And the ones that do not want to go, you pray. Through prayer, uh -huh. you send them. That's all it takes. Prayer. Wow. You don't have to go through all this ritual that you see in, in the movie. What's the name of the exorcist. Exorcist. the exorcist? No, no, that's not. That's nonsense. What about their, uh, their guide? 
you call upon their God. You, you may. You know, I, I do. I do. I, I get all I get all the help that I can get. Right. <laughs> just, just to address her question, I actually have a uh, on my website I have a blog. It's called Exorcism on Christmas Eve. And uh, I did this session on Christmas Eve. It goes back I don't know, five, six, seven years ago. Same exact thing. My electric electronics went. It was definitely a possession. It was a very challenging one. And at that time, I think it was the first one I came across, the first entity I came across. And I was very rigid. Actually, if you read e uh, Fury's book, uh, which I read after that, um, <laughs> would have been helpful to read it before. Yeah. But if you approach it the way Dave is saying, approach it with love and prayer, you're more like an assistance from the other side. That's the other thing I've done in my session. I'll ask for assistance from the other side to come and get this lost soul, this needy soul. And that the last, I had one a couple months ago where I did that, and that worked very well. Right. So there's okay. different approaches you can take. So quickly. Uh, and, and speaking of electronics and all this stuff, I'm working with a client that, that it, the entity does not want to go. Um, I forgot that I, that I didn't shut off my phone. I pick it up, and guess what I see on the screen? Dark. <laughs> I kept, kept scrolling. Darkness. Darkness. So, I mean, if you ever had doubt, I don't know what, what else you need to see that there's darkness in, in also in life. So, one last comment and then I'm closing. Um, one of the things that I, will, I might do in, with that young lady yeah. is also have her look at the options. Futu futuristic. Yes. Look at her. Okay, here is if you go with your alternative. In lieu of taking your life, what 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 is your path? What what are the results? What will be your soul lessons? Because one of the things that we find is that people that kill themselves have the tendency to create a pattern. Yes, that's what and, I found. In that pattern, in that pattern has to be break off like any any other pattern that does not serve as well. Yep. So I think I'm going over my time, or do I have more time? You have five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Yes, sir. I did break that pattern. That's what wonderful. You did That's what you yeah, did. Yeah. Wonderful. You there did. you go. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like you do this work in person, or do you do it on on any uh, computer video equipment? A hundred percent of my work is one on one. Yeah. One on one. I am not in favor of doing yeah. over the phone. I'm not in favor of doing over the computer. One on one. I do. The only thing I do over the phone is the intake. Yeah. The clinical intake. Yeah. But other than that, oh, I, I have to go back. Uh, I work with someone here, and that person told me I'm, I'm going back to the East Coast. Um, we want to continue, so I programmed that person to respond over the phone. But we already had that initial contact. Mm -hmm. How do you keep your energy feel clear? I manifest that from this moment on, we're having to ask God again that I'd be always protected with the, with the white light or God in, in the Christ light, that I'd be surrounded, that I'd be protected, wherever I go, wherever I am, at home, at work, in my car, and I release and I let go, and I put that in faith, and if I forget to do my protection, that's never been a problem, because I, I, God only needs to be prayed once. God doesn't need to be prayed over and over over the same issue, over, over the same request. God only needs whoever God is to you, okay? God to me is oneness, a creator. One all, a group of energy that has created a universe and that has created us to evolve and become something down the road as energy. To, to that to that. Creator, I, I pray once, I release and I let go, and I will tell you, many times I have not, I'm not done any kind of protection, and I have never, in, in all my life, the, the worst that I have had is cold. No illness of any time, no, no, no health of any time, no mental breakdowns, no attachments. So, what I do suggest is that if you can, for all, for all, if anything, for relaxation, do yoga, pilates, hiking, uh, and other kind of activities like that, which I do. So. But you know, as far as my protection, that's <coughs> I ask. And, when, and I do go to church. Uh, actually, I belong to a, a church where we do healing. 
So I just reinforce it. I already know that I'm protecting, but I'm asking that I be continue to be protected. One last question then. So uh, you always end up attracting the kind of those kind of clients then. I mean, basically, you're like you tell the universe, "Hey, bring me these clients because I can deal with this." And, and actually, I didn't ask for a specific client. Sure. That's what I keep getting. That's what the universe would bring. Um, and that's what I get. Have you ever had a client who came in knowing that they had a, an attachment, possession, whatever you would call it? Mm. When it releases, are they certain that it has released? In many ways. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ways is the life improved. Whatever issues they have when they come in, it goes away. Would it be something they feel right there at that session? Often, mm -hmm. if not if not all the time, most of the time, they they can tell significant, significant. Yes, about your your clients. They they are they are not aware when they come in. It's discovered during the session. They are completely aware when it leaves. Absolutely, yeah. <coughs> yes, Mike. <laughs> okay. Well. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.